Four years ago when I began metal detecting, there was no way that I could anticipate some of the incredible stories that I would have the opportunity to tell because of simple metal detecting finds. Some of the finds that I hold closest to my heart have always been military finds. Whether it's a silver Navy waves pin that belonged to a woman who served in World War II and later became a world traveler and author. Or whether it's the machine gunner's collar disc belonging to a soldier who died in the trenches of France during World War I. Or whether it's an ink pen. Now the ink pen took me by surprise. My friend and fellow detectorist Josh Fields actually found this pen while metal detecting and posted a picture online. I commented that I thought it was pretty interesting looking and he said he was going to send it to me. And he told me that he thought the pen had something to do with special forces. And he was right. The pen is unique because it's constructed of bullet casings. I wanted to know who made this pen. It was very obvious that it was a quality made object. Somebody put a lot of time into it. So I began to research. That brought me to a website called Junior's Bullet Pens. And I found myself speaking to a man by the name of Jeff Falkel. Jeff began to explain why he makes these ink pens and he began to tell me the story of his son, Staff Sergeant Chris Falkel. It's that story that I want to share with you, at least in part. In researching Chris's story, I've become better acquainted with the word warrior. I have a deeper understanding of what it means, and I hope you will too. My first question for Jeff when I began talking to him was to find out whether or not this was his ink pen. There was no maker's mark on it, no identifying features. And then Jeff asked me a question. He said, look at the clip that holds the pen inside a pocket. Is there a sword on that pen? And there was indeed. He said, that's my pen. Now that's no ordinary sword. That's a Spartan sword. And there's a very good reason for that. Chris was a boy, just like any other American boy, but in many ways, he was very different. From the very beginning, it was obvious that Chris had a path in life, and that path was to be a special forces soldier. How many eight-year-old boys do you know that have special forces patches pinned on the wall above their bed? Chris followed that path faithfully throughout his young life with the help of his father. They did things together that most people would find odd and strange. How many fathers and sons do you know that actually spend time doing sleep deprivation training? Well, this was Chris's life, and it all served a great purpose. Chris was attached to Operational Detachment Alpha 316, a group of warriors that were already in Afghanistan. When Chris met up with them, he had to prove that he too was a warrior, and he did so rapidly. Chris found himself on top of a Humvee manning a 50 caliber machine gun. And on August 7, 2005, ODA 316 left camp on a patrol through the Bukagar Valley. This patrol would turn into a 54-hour running battle with the Taliban, a battle that lives on in Special Forces history. The Taliban would launch surprise attacks and ambushes from the walls of the valley. Chris, with his 50 caliber, would return a deadly and withering fire that saved the lives of many in that patrol. Now, it's important to note that at this time in 2005, those Humvees, they weren't up-armored. There wasn't a nice armor protective shell around Chris. He sat up on top of that Humvee and he returned fire on the enemy. He did so to such an extent that the enemy began to realize that Chris's vehicle, the, the rear vehicle and the convoy, was one that they needed to pay close attention to. On August 8, 2005 in the Marigar Valley, Chris's life was ended by a sniper's bullet. I wanna to read to you now a small portion of Chris's Silver Star citation. He earned that Silver Star for his heroics on that day. Staff Sergeant Falkel 
while fully exposed, quickly and effectively spun his turret and machine gun in the direction of fire and began to engage. The whole time, rounds were impacting all around our vehicle and him. He continued to engage without care for his own welfare or safety, his only care being that of his fellow team members. He continued to suppress the well-concealed enemy until aircraft came on station. Staff Sergeant Falco was able to spot and lay down effective fire so the aircraft knew where to fire to completely eliminate the enemy threat. Once again, we intercepted ACM communications that again said they were reorganizing at a location that they had had success with in the past. Staff Sergeant Falco demanded that we continue on and finish the enemy. As we entered Kakyungar Valley, the enemy opened up with what was to be Staff Sergeant Falco's fifth and final encounter with this highly trained, numerically superior, and well-equipped ACM force that we had been dealing with and pursuing for the past 30 hours. They opened up on our lead element as before with extraordinary volumes of machine gun, RPG, and AK-47 fire. Staff Sergeant Falco rapidly spun his turret and gun while informing the rear gunner of our vehicle where the fire was coming from and began to engage without care for his own life. His only concerns were for the care of his fellow teammates and trying to eliminate or draw some of the fire from those machine gun positions that had our lead element pinned down. No sooner had Staff Sergeant Falco begun to engage the well-in-placed enemy positions when the rear gunner of our vehicle saw him slumped over his 50 caliber machine gun, still oriented towards and covering down on the ACM elements that were heavily engaging his teammates. It was later discovered that he had taken a single shot to the head. It is my belief that Staff Sergeant Falco was targeted by an ACM sniper due to his effectiveness during the four earlier enemy ambushes that accrued in the 34 hours prior. Staff Sergeant Falco willfully and voluntarily chose to serve in Operation Enduring Freedom, supporting his fellow soldiers, the legitimate government of Afghanistan, and the United States of America in the global war on terror. The distinctive accomplishments of Staff Sergeant Falco reflect great credit upon himself. The Combined Joint Special Operations Task Force, Afghanistan, and the United States Army. While researching for this video, I had the great opportunity to spend some time talking to Jeff. He related to me stories of Chris's life and of his time in the service. They're great stories, and I wish I could share them all with you. But I could never do it as well as what Jeff has done it himself. Jeff's written a book called The Making of Our Warrior. It's an incredible story of the love of a father and a son, and the love of a group of brothers, a group of warriors. I encourage you to purchase this book and read it. It's one of three ways that you can actually support this community of Special Forces soldiers that has served us so well. Here is the first of three ways that you can support the Special Forces community, a group of people who have given so much to us. When you purchase this book, all the royalties go to the Special Operations Warrior Foundation. Jeff very kindly sent me a copy of this book, and I highly recommend it to you. You can also consider donating to the Task Force Dagger Foundation. This is an organization that is actively involved in all aspects of our Special Forces community. From caring for the wounded soldiers to meeting the needs of their families, they're also involved in the search for and return of the remains of soldiers who never made it home from previous wars in our nation's history. And last but not least, you can go to where this story all began for me, Junior's Bullet Pins. You can help Jeff as he works in our Special Forces community to support the soldiers still on the front lines. The idea for this bullet pin, it was Chris's. It was something he wanted to do when he came home from Afghanistan. I want to finish this video by talking about this pin and this sword that is on it. It's a Spartan sword, and I told you there was a reason for that. A Spartan soldier was once asked, 
why their swords were not bigger, longer, more deadly. And the Spartan replied, it's long enough to reach your heart. But it wasn't the Spartan sword that was his most valued possession. It was a Spartan shield. It was an act of great cowardice to return from battle without your shield. On the shield of every Spartan soldier was a symbol called the Lambda. The story is told of Spartan mothers that they would bring the shields to their sons before they left for battle. And as they handed the shield to their son, they would say, return with this shield or return on it. The warriors of ODA 316 also wore a Lambda on their shoulder patches. They too were warriors of the greatest caliber. Thank you.